you, it, it seems like Palantir is doing something unique in the space of defense, which is attracting sort of talented young people in a way that legacy defense uh, industry companies seem to be losing to Silicon Valley. How are you doing that? What is sort of the, what is the philosophy? And uh, I would do a follow-up question because actually that was also my uh, question. You, we were talking just in the backstage that you're interested in Poland and Ukraine because of the software talent, people that are here and the software. But at the same time, although in Europe we produce great cars, we can't really produce great software, or at least we cannot compete with what's happening in the United States. So if you could combine um, these two questions, both, the last so, two minutes. I mean, I'm here, very honored to be here. One of the reasons I'm here is because of the software town in this region, I would say uh, Poland and Ukraine are shining examples. And we value the, the very unique kind of talent which you find here. I, I believe first thing Europe has to do is address the, the situation, like, Stop producing copies of American companies and try to produce unique companies that are truly baller, to use the term we would use in the, in, in the valley. Uh, I, I suspect many of those companies are going to come from this region simply because in Eastern Europe, building exactly as much closer to Silicon Valley 1.0. You build software that you need for a war environment. That software better work. And then you figure out ways to do use it commercially. You build, you build on things that actually work, not on PowerPoints supported by your government that are largely supporting consultants that have never built a tech company. And this is very much linked to how you attract the best talent. This question, like, this is exactly the kind of question you have to answer internally. What is your software going to do? How is it going to create value where value is not just killing the adversary, but protecting your norms? And if you want to have the best of the best of the best, you have a talent spotter, which is part of what I did for, you know, and am doing. And I go to the places where people undervalue the talent. That's like, I know the talent in Poland in this region is better than people, other people for lots of reasons. I go there, I spot the talent, I recruit them. And how do you keep them? You keep them by saying, hey, these are very tough questions. A normal company could never solve these questions. In our environment, they're going to be solved in a depoliticized way, which is very appealing, by the way, especially in America, because people are really tired of politicization. We can't get our politicians to stop it because it's so effective, and you, you, know, you can't explain why the country doesn't work, but you can explain why you hate your neighbor. Uh, and you, you, it works in Poland and here because you guys are never going to be into that stuff that just doesn't make any sense to you. You might pretend you're okay with it because you have a great alliance with us in America. No Polish person buys into that. Um, and, uh, um, and you come and you work in a depoliticized environment on the most important issues. And by the way, when COVID breaks out, the vaccine you got in America or in Britain, that's in Palantir. Uh, most of the terrorists uh, that you, you know, that all these things that you can't, the war in, in Ukraine actually institutionalizing norms you believe in. By the way, institutionalizing norms does not mean writing a paper about them. It means winning with them. And that's a business problem. It, if you want to write a paper about norms in a politicized way, th there's a 10-year track for you. But you're not going to want to go there anymore as a really talented quantitative person because the minute you trip some qualitative line you didn't even understand, you're not going to get tenure. You want to be in an environment where your values win. And you know how you can do that? You build a software company and you get people like in this room to implement the software and you say, hey, I know I'm not likable, but the software is going to bring you alive home and your values are going to win. You want likability? There's 50 companies that can do that and they can do it in every jurisdiction. They know the best stake, they know the best golf course, their teeth are white. We don't do that, but we do attract and retain the best talent and we build products and the products are so powerful that people are scared of them.